House Majority Leader Congressman Steve Scalise joins me now. Congressman, you've seen the information on this threat. What more can you tell us about it? Well, Stuart, I appreciate you having me, and I did see this classified briefing yesterday, uh, and it's alarming, but uh, I agree with the speaker's comments. There's no reason for the American people to be concerned, but I do think that it would be helpful if the president declassified this, uh, not only to engage our allies, uh, but there are countries that are not necessarily our allies that also, I think, would want to know this information that would also be alarmed by this information and would help us in addressing it. If the Russians were to put nukes in space, that would break the 1967 treaty, which said no nukes in space. So that's what we're dealing with here, the possible breach of a treaty. Now, well, I can't get into specifics about the classified information, but at the same time, uh, again, I do think it would be helpful if it was declassified okay. so that we could engage uh, not only, again, not only our allies, but other countries as well. Congressman, I'll leave it right there, believe me. Now, House Security Chairman, uh, Congressman Mark Green, he's announced that he's not going to seek re-election this year. And he joins four other committee chairs who will also forego re-election. That's kind of a mass GOP exodus. Congressman, why are they leaving? Well, you know, unfortunately, you see this uh, every now and then. And in our majority, we actually limit our chairman to six years. Um, the Democrats don't limit their chairman. And, you know, and that's just a choice we made a long time ago when Newt, uh, Newt Gingrich took the majority in 1994. They put term limits in place for committee chairs. And I think that's been helpful because it allows younger members the ability to say, look, I don't have to wait around for 30 years to be a chairman, you know, because ultimately I'm going to have an opportunity to hold a gavel someday. Uh, and so what that means is when a chairman gets to their six years, a lot of them leave. And, and I don't blame them because, you know, there's going to be other opportunities that they're going to have uh, after their, their tenure as a chairman. But the Democrats don't do that. We do. And, and frankly, I think it's healthy that we limit our chairman to six years. Over your years. But we lose some good people yeah. and we're going to lose a few good folks, uh, over, um, you know, and, and I'm sorry to see that. Over your years in Congress, ha has politics, being a politician, become more difficult, uh, not more dangerous in your case, but I mean more, more toxic, I can use that word. Is it, is it getting worse? Yeah, the environment's definitely more toxic, Stuart. Um, you, know, you, you know, social media even ele elevates that higher, but yeah. you know, I think the country is so divided right now. You see it in elections. I mean, look at how close our majority is. That's a reflection of where the country is because you know, in every district in America, you know, whether it's a deep red district or a deep blue district or a swing district, uh, you know, you're seeing a very divided nation right now over a lot of key issues. And so, you know, this is going to play out this year. This is a major election year. We got a presidential election. Congress is all up. Uh, you know, there's a good chance the Senate can flip to Republican. But I mean, it's going to be razor thin no matter what that margin is, because we have a nation that's divided and that's reflected surely here in the House. You impeached Secretary Mayorkas this week. But the Senate is moving to dismiss this impeachment. So what do you get out of it? Well, first of all, we laid out the case. And Chairman Green, you know, while, while he's going to be leaving at the end of this year, he and his committee did an incredible job over months laying out the case uh, for why Secretary Mayorkas failed in his mission to protect the American people uh, and should be impeached. And then ultimately that came to the floor and passed. Uh, whether the Senate takes that seriously or not, I don't know. That's not my job. That's the Senate's job. But I would urge the Senate to take this seriously because most Americans do. Most Americans are disgusted by the open southern border, Stuart. The fact that you've got thousands of people every day coming across our border, including people on the terrorist watch list, people from hostile nations who want to do America harm that are just strolling right across the Rio Grande, coming into America. And we don't know where they are. I can't tell you where they are. The White House won't tell you which states they're going to. They won't even tell governors how many people are going to be showing up at three in the morning by busload to their community. But I'll tell you this, you know, whether it's Democrat mayors in major cities or Republicans, it doesn't matter the party. Uh, people don't want an open southern border and it's affecting every community in America. And it's got to be stopped. And we take it seriously, even if the secretary of Homeland Security and the president of the United States don't. Congressman Steve Scalise, we hope you're in good health, uh, returning to good health. And uh, God bless you, yeah, sir. Thanks. God's been good to me. So <laughs> good to be with you. Thanks you a too. lot. Thank you, sir.